If you take the editing adjustments you already know and use, but begin to mix them with masking techniques that you're probably neglecting right now, I guarantee you'll see a bigger impact on the stylization of your edits, more so than learning any other tool. But in Photoshop, masking can feel quite challenging, or at the very least, very time consuming. So rather than using selections and layer masks, I'm gonna break down a three-stage masking system in Camera Raw that you can use to transform your photos immediately, and these same techniques can apply in Lightroom as well. But before we get started, I can already hear what some of you are saying. Brendan, I already use masks in my edits. I don't think that they can make much more of a difference. Well, using masks is one thing, but I know that most of us aren't going beyond their basic uses, which is exactly what I aim to solve in this video. Now, if you would like to follow along and try these techniques for yourself, you can download this image for free in the description below. But once you have it into Photoshop, our first step is to convert this image into to a smart object. Since I opened this photo straight into Photoshop as a new document, I'm just going to unlock the background layer by clicking the lock icon, right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object. If you're opening a raw file directly into Photoshop, you'll be able to skip the step since Camera Raw will open automatically. But with this layer converted into a smart object, we'll go and access Camera Raw by going to Filter and down here to Camera Raw Filter. The reason that we converted our image into a smart object is so that all of the changes that we make in Camera Raw will be accessible later on in the project after we save our changes. So all of the masking techniques that we're going to cover in this video are after you've already done your base adjustments. So obviously this photo already has some edits to the shadows and highlights and the white balance and things like that. Now we're going to take it even further, and in this case, I'm gonna add a totally different feel to it for the sake of example Example, but we're only going to use masks for these adjustments. Our first job with the masking process is to set a overall feel with general masking. That's going to be the background and our subject. So to begin, I'm going to click on the masking icon and choose the background. This will create an automatic selection of everything except for our subject. I have a green highlight in view here. Your color might be a little bit different, but you can customize it by clicking this option here. Anything that is under this highlight represents what will be edited by your adjustments. In this case, I want to mute down some of the background and add some more warm tones. You can go ahead and do your own adjustments, but I'll quickly run through what adjustments I'll make here. To begin, I'll go to the whites and bring this down quite a ways like so to mute some of the background. Then I'll go to the blacks and decrease the blacks in equal amount, so I still have some contrast. It's just muted down. I'll then open up the color panel, and since I want a more rich sunset feel, I'll add a whole bunch of yellow to the image and then add a little bit more purple to make it feel a bit more rich and red. Next, I'll change the overall hue of the background. I'll just click on this option here. This will add a global hue adjustment. I want to make the grass and things feel a bit more orangey yellow, so I'm bringing it down around 15 in this case. Again, if you're using the same image, you'll probably wanna follow along, but on your own photos, this is gonna look totally different. It's just a general process to follow. Finally, I wanna add a general color tint, so I'll click on this color option here, and I'll choose a new color. I want a brownish red color of sorts, so this looks good enough for me here. I'll decrease the saturation just slightly. Clicking OK, the final thing I'd like to do is add a little bit of manual color adjustments, so I'll click on the point sample eyedropper tool, click on the grass to sample that brown color, and now we can go and change the hue of just the grass nice and easily with this adjustment. So now the feel of our background has been set, and we can now blend in our subject, which is going to be our next mask. Clicking on the Create New Mask, we'll go to Select Subject this time, and now we have the green highlight representing where we will be editing just over the subject this time. While that mask is selected, all of the adjustments that we make will only affect that active mask. To begin, I want to increase the contrast of the subject. I'm going to increase the highlights since this is going to be a bit more of a lighter, high contrast image. Decrease the white slightly and decrease the blacks as well. Since the hair is looking a bit too dark, I'll just lift the shadows ever so slightly to bring some detail back into the hair. Finally, to make her blend better with the background, I wanna add a bit of purple to remove some of that green color cast. So going to the tint slider, 
I'll just add a little bit of purple here like so. Now we've really changed the overall feel of our image, but we can also further control the midtones and the shadows within the image using luminance range masks. Essentially how these work is you can sample an exposure range and adjust it as you would like to refine all of the contrast and color adjustments for just that exposure range. It gives you a lot more flexibility than just a simple highlights or shadows adjustment. So to begin, let's create a new luminance mask. So I'll click on the new mask icon and go to luminance range. And to begin, let's do the midtone slash highlights. So I'll click right in here within the grass and anywhere that we see highlighted is going to be adjusted once again but we can refine this area by moving these sliders right here. Anything within this box will be fully adjusted, 100% affected, but anything between the outer edge of this box and the line over here is going to gradually fade into not being adjusted. So if you want to have a harder edge to your adjustment, we can move these sliders here to make the edge harder or move them out to make the adjustment softer. You can narrow the range by decreasing this little box here so it affects less of your photo. But as you can see, if we go this way, it affects more highlights. If we go the opposite way, it affects more shadows. So I'll stay back in the range that we were, and I just want to affect those brighter mid-tone areas. I want to make them look a little bit brighter, so I'll just increase the exposure just a little bit, and then increase the blacks a touch as well to lighten them up overall and make them feel a little less contrasty. Now to do the opposite of this, we'll go to the Create New Mask Luminance range, and this time we'll sample a darker tone, so in the shadows down here. Now we have a slightly different adjustment. I want this to extend a little bit further out into the mid-tones and things. So I'll extend this box and extend the feather like so. So we have a bit more of a broad selection. And this time I'm going to slightly darken the exposure to add some contrast in there. Darken the blacks just a touch and then play around with the temperature, adding a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple to make those colors feel a bit richer. Now, if you don't like how much is being affected, we can always go back to the luminance range adjustment and refine this area so that less of our photo is being affected by this adjustment. But this looks good enough for me here. The final thing I'll do is add a color overlay to this area. So going to the bottom color, I'll click on this box right here. And then I want to go choose a purple color like so, and I'll decrease the saturation so it is a little bit less intense. I'll click OK. Now, I don't really like how this is affecting the subject so intensely. So what we can do to solve that is click on the subtract option and go to subject. This means that we'll take our subject selection and subtract it from the current mask, which is our shadows luminance adjustment. Now, if you like, you can rename any of these masks as it can get confusing just by right clicking on that mask and going to rename. I'll call this to shadows luminance and so on. I'll quickly take a moment to rename my masks before we move on. Now, before we move on to the next stage, I think we can all see how Photoshop might benefit our images, but figuring out the program kind of feels like eating soup with a fork. It's just kind of annoying. But if you instead want a spoon to enjoy your Photoshop soup and absorb more of that nutritious knowledge, my free Photoshop quick start guide helps you get up and running in the program in a deliciously simple way. You can grab your free copy in the description below and make learning Photoshop as enjoyable as eating your favorite soup with a real spoon. Again, it's totally free in the description below. I don't know if this analogy made any sense, but let's get back to it with stage two. Now in stage two, we are adding our enhancements. So we've already set the general feel for our photo, which is dramatically different than the original. We've customized the colors and exposure for the background, the subject, the highlights, and the shadows. So now we're gonna go and add some customized lighting enhancements, such as some brightening around the background edges of the subject, or a bit of a custom darkening vignette around the photo. So to begin, I wanna just add a slight brightening glow behind the subject. So I'll do this by creating a new radial gradient. Clicking and dragging out, I want to create a gradient that just generally fits a little bit outside of the subject. Something like this looks good for me. But when I go and brighten this, this is of course going to brighten the subject. I just want to add a slight glow behind the subject around the outer edges. So that means we need to subtract from this mask. Going to subtract and then we just choose what we want to subtract from, which is the subject in this case. Now this adjustment will only apply behind the subject so we can apply a little bit of a glow here. So I'll just boost the exposure slightly 
and add some warmth there as well to make it feel a little bit richer around the subject without brightening her specifically. I'll rename this mask to subject glow. Now let's use that same radial gradient along with a linear gradient to create a custom vignette. Going to create new mask, I'll once again choose radial gradient and click and drag out around the entire canvas like this. Currently, everything inside this radial gradient is being adjusted, but I want the opposite of that. I only want to affect the outer edges of this gradient. So over here in our masking panel, we can just click on the three dots here while our radial gradient is active and go to invert. This will switch the selected area. So now we are only selecting the outer edges of this gradient and we can change the feather of that gradient to either extend more into the center or less into the center using our feather setting for the radial gradient. Now I just want a little bit of the highlight to appear around the outer edges like so, but I don't want this to affect the sky at all. So I'll go to subtract and then select sky, meaning it's going to remove this adjustment from the sky so the sky will not have any vignetting adjustments. The next thing I want to do is also subtract the subject. So I'll go to subtract and subject. So now I can freely click on the radial gradient and adjust the feather and it's not going to affect my subject in any way. That way it gives me a little more flexibility with these adjustments. I'm going to just move this out a little bit further. So things are a bit less intense on the outer edges, something like this. But what I do want is a bit more darkening down here on the bottom. So I'll add a new mask in this case and add a linear gradient. Combining this with the radial gradient that I just created, we now can have a total darkening adjustment down at the bottom and then a softer darkening adjustment or vignette effect around the edges here. That is because we're combining both the radial and the linear gradient. With all of that set up, I can now just adjust the exposure. I'll darken this down a little bit like so. Decrease the blacks, play around with the whites and highlights, and you can choose whatever works best for you. But I kind of like these high contrasty dark looks. Renaming this mask to vignette. The third of four things that I want to do within the stage is now add a bit of a glow along the horizon. So going to create new mask since we're creating a new adjustment, I'll go to the brush and then I'll just go and paint along the edge of the horizon like so. I don't need to be super careful. Now you might notice that the intensity of the highlight that I'm painting is pretty low. And that's because if I look at my brush settings, I have the density down quite low as well as the flow setting. So you can play around with these if you want your adjustment from your brush to be more or less visible. For these glowing adjustments, I like to use these lower settings so that the glow blends in a little bit nicer within the photo. So with that painted in, let's go and add that glowing effect by scrolling down to our effects and then reducing the clarity. This just adds a soft glowy effect in the areas that we've painted. And we can then just boost the exposure slightly to lighten those up as well and enhance that glow. Now, if you don't want this to affect your subject in any way, we can, of course, as you probably guess at this point, go to subtract and select subject. Now this is only affecting the background there. It's just adding a slight little glow. I'll rename this to Horizon Glow. Now the fourth and final adjustment for this stage that I want to create is to fix up the color of our subject's arm. She looks like she has kind of a corpse arm in this case because it's just so desaturated. So let's add a little bit of color back into that. And we'll be using a adjustment tool that we haven't used yet. Going to create new mask, this time we'll go to select objects. What this allows us to do is paint over an area generally that we want to select, which is her arm, and then Photoshop will snap to any edges that it detects within that area. So as you can see, it's just selected her arm with that green highlight and she's turned into the Hulk. So with that ready to go, we can add some color using the color overlay feature. So I'll go to the color option, click on the color swatch, and then we can find a color that works for our subject's skin kind of like this orangey yellow red color. That looks pretty good to me there. I'll click OK, but her fingers look a little too saturated. So we'll go to subtract, then brush. And now we can just go and paint over her fingers to remove that color adjustment from the areas that it looked a bit funny in. But now turning this on and off, we just add a little bit more life back to our subject's arm and things are looking more balanced. 
I'll rename this to arm color. Now things are really coming along in our edit, but we can do even more with this photo in our third and final stage, which is creative exposure. Using some simple brush adjustments, we can do some dodging and burning, and then finally add a little bit of a light glow to finalize the effect. So going to create new mask, I'll go to brush, and I want to use a density of 100%, but I'll bring the flow down to something like 50. That way we'll get some nice variation within the adjustment that we'll paint. To begin, let's go and paint anywhere that we want to add darkening to the image. So I'm going to paint around some of the shadows here, some of the background over this way. If the colored highlight looks too intense, we can always bring down the density and then paint with a less intense adjustment like so. With that good to go, we can go to our exposure sliders and just drag down the exposure slightly to darken up any of the areas that we painted in. Sometimes, depending on your preferences, it's easier to make your adjustment first and then go and paint because then you see in real time what is actually happening. It is just user preference. For me, I like doing the opposite. Either way, once you've applied your adjustment, you can just go and paint in the other areas that you want to darken as well. With our burning adjustment complete, I'll rename this to burn, we can now create a, another brush adjustment going to brush, but this time we are going to dodge, which means brightening our photo. With the same brush settings as before, I'm just going to paint over any areas that I want to brighten in the image. Maybe I want to brighten around the subject's face a little bit, along some of the lighter areas in the grass, maybe some of the bits of flowers here. But with that good to go, I will lighten up the exposure just like so, and that gives us a little bit of new contrast around the image. If you don't like it in any areas, we can always go to the eraser mode for our brush tool and then just go and paint over any areas that we do not want to affect on our particular mask. I'll rename this to Dodge. And the final thing that I'd like to do is add a little bit of a glow to the corner of this image, adding some color and lightning adjustment to make it feel like the sunlight is coming more specifically from a certain direction. Going to create new mask, I'll go to radial gradient and I'll click and drag out in the corner of the photo. Where you see these two little dots, we can hover outside of them and rotate that radial gradient as we would like and I'll position this somewhere over here. Now to create this sun glow effect, I'll just add a little bit of warming adjustments here to make it feel like a nice warm glow of sunshine. Increase the exposure, or you can adjust the highlights and shadows depending on what preferences you have, but I'll go with a little bit of shadow lightning and a bit of highlight lightning. And then I don't want this to affect my subject at all, so I'll go to subtract and then select subject. Now this adjustment will only take place behind the subject and I can move it anywhere I want to apply that sun glow in the background. So this looks pretty good to me there and I'll rename this mask finally to sun glow. Now with those three stages of masking complete, looking at that before and after, we have a pretty dramatic difference all done with a whole bunch of different masks as you see here in the masking panel. We can always go back and edit them by clicking on any of those masks, but once you're done we can click OK and here's where the smart object becomes useful. Because now in our layers panel we have a camera raw smart filter that we can double click to react access all of our settings from before. Now, although masking is super useful and can make really transformative edits to your photos, this is just one piece of all of the photo editing adjustments that you can create. And it's just only one little piece of Photoshop as a whole. So if you now want to see a photo editing workflow that uses more of the tools inside of Photoshop rather than in Camera Raw, make sure to check out this video right here next where I break down a start to finish photo editing workflow that you can start using right now. I hope to see you over in that video next and see you next time.